Welcome to Blossoming by Grace and Grit. This is message 586. The name of our devotional today is We Are God's Concern. But first, let us pray. My Lord, my God, thank you, my Father, for this beautiful day that you have made. We are glad in it, my Father. We rejoice in it, my God. We exalt your holy name, God. You are a good God, and you are good all the time, my Father. My Lord God, thank you that Christ is our life and that we are a member of his body and a dwelling place of his spirit. How privileged we are to be indwelt by your glorious presence, by the Holy Trinity of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, so that you can display your excellence to those around us. Thank you for the day when we let go of the whole burden of our sins and rested on the atoning work of Christ, on the total payment he made for us on the cross. And thank you that today is that same simple way I can let go of the whole burden of my life, of my marriage, of my children, of all my relationships, past, present, and future. I can let go of my inadequacies and my self-dependence and rest on your presence working in me through the Holy Spirit. How good it is to transfer those burdens from my shoulders to yours and to rest on you, to work in me and for me and through me. I praise you for the gracious way you infuse me with inner strength through Christ and so I'm ready for anything you want me to do. And I am equal to anything you allow to happen in my life. Thank you that I can give myself up to be led by you. That I can go forth praising and at rest letting you manage me and my day. That I can joyfully depend on you throughout the day expecting you to guide, to enlighten, to re reprove, to teach and to use and to do in me, with me, what you desire, that I can count upon your working in me and through me as a fact, totally apart from sight or feeling, that I can go forth praising and at rest, believing you and obeying you and ceasing from the burden of doing works to try and please you, because I only please you by my faith. It is only by faith that the key of heaven is open to us. My Lord God, thank you so much that we can throw the whole weight of our anxieties on you, for we are your personal concern. My Lord God, thank you so much for this day, my Father. Thank you for the word that I will release to your people. Thank you, O oh God, for blessing each and every person that is listening to the sound of my voice. We give you praise, honor, and glory today and every day in Jesus' name. We are God's concern. Psalm 8, verse 4. What is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? Psalm 8.4 captures a profound truth about God's relationship with humanity. The psalmist marvels at the fact that the creator of the universe, the one who placed the stars in the skies and set the earth in motion, is deeply concerned with us. This verse expresses awe at the magnitude of God's care for each of us individually, despite our smallness in comparison to the vastness of creation. The phrase, you are mindful of them, highlights that God is not distant or indifferent. He is constantly aware of us, thinking about us and caring for us. This mindfulness means that God is intimately involved in every aspect of our lives, from the smallest detail to the most significant of challenges. We are never out of his thoughts. The psalmist goes on to ask, what is mankind that you care for them? This question emphasizes the wonder of God's care, 
God's concern with for us is not abstract or impersonal. It is active, loving, and personal. He knows our needs, our struggles, and our desires, and he is deeply invested in our well-being. This verse challenges us to see ourselves as God sees us, valuable and worthy of his attention. It's easy to feel insignificant or overlooked in a world that often measures worth by external success or status, but in God's eyes, we are his creation. We are made in his image, and we have immense value. His concern for us is a reflection of his love and our worth for him. Trusting in God's care. Knowing that we are God's concern should lead us to trust him more deeply. We can bring our worries, our fears, and needs to him, confident that he hears us and cares for us. God's concern is not limited by our circumstances. He is able and willing to provide, protect, and guide us in every situation. Our response to God's care should be one of gratitude and trust. When we realize how deeply God cares for us, it changes how we live. We can face life's challenges with confidence, knowing that we are not alone. We can also extend that same care to others, reflecting God's love and concern in our relationships. What about the people that are going through hard times? What about the people that have a sickness or an infirmity or a disease? What about the people that have great loss in their lives? Does God still care for them? Is God still concerned for them? The person that is going through a hard time, a loss, a death in their family, a situation that is very unjust, and they're asking God, why did this happen? And where have you been or where are you in this situation? Or a person that is sick and going through cancer or going through some type of a, a, an infirmity, a disease, an infection, whatever the case may be. We always revert to why God, why me, and why did this happen? We always go there. We cut our finger or we go through something in our lives and we're always blaming God. And if we know anything about what we have read in the Bible, if we know every, anything about how good and evil work, we know that God does not inflict diseases. He does not put on, on us temptations. He does not create uh, chaos in our lives. We know that diseases come from the enemy and it comes from the fall of man all the way from the garden of evil through the disobedience of one person. We know that diseases are part of the, the world and the way that the world works. We know that diseases are also culprits of how we live and how we eat and what are our behaviors and what do we do we drink liquor are we smoking cigarettes are we eating uh, foods that that are unhealthy there are many different reasons but not all the reasons are should uh, to be blaming God in other words so in other words we need to understand and we need to uh, put at rest our doubts and our unbelief. We need to believe that God is good in our essence, in our core, in our heart, in the deepest recesses of our soul, that no matter what we're going through, that God is with us, that he is walking with us, that there is, that there is nothing that God cannot help us with, or there is nothing that God does not see. In other words, we need to understand and we need to believe that God innately is a good God, that he is a merciful God, that he is a compassionate God, that he loves us deeply. And so we also should be standing on the word. And if we have a financial problem, we need to get that word in us. We need to pray those Bible verses about our finances and believe God for a breakthrough, believe God for a promotion, believe God for a, um, a breaking of that situation. If you're sick, you use Bible verses to, 
to pray over yourself and to believe God for your total restoration and use examples in the Bible that just like you healed this person, my Father, I am praying that you will heal me. And putting our trust in God completely and totally and utterly is the only way to live in this world, the only way to live in this life. Who are we going to put our trust in? Are we going to put our trust in man that is broken and fallen and sinful? Are we going to put our trust in the president and and the, the whole uh, system of uh, rules and laws of the United States? Are we going to put our trust in, in, in medicine and, and doctors? I mean, we can trust doctors? Yes, definitely. God created botany and he created uh, botany to create medicine and pharmacology and all of that. He created um, doctors and he created dentists and all of those things. But our main trust, the main focus of our trust should be God first and foremost, always going to him first and foremost and believing that he will that he will come through, that he will heal you and he will turn the situation around. I understand that there are people that have been going through things for a long time. And the only thing that I can say is keep on trusting God because God will never fail you. God will never, God will never leave you ashamed and begging for bread, never. God wants us to be happy, healthy, and whole. He wants us to be prosperous. He wants us to be the, the light on the mountain, the lamp that turns on the light on the mountain. It is the reflection of his glory for everyone to see. And so when you are in lack, when you're in poverty, when you have a rundown car, when you're living in a little room, in, in a little cot, that doesn't give glory to God. Of course, if you need to travel around in airplanes and have multi-million dollar mansions, you know, it's unnecessary when you think about the simple life and how much joy and how much peace that life will give. So it's everything in regards to balance. Everything requires balance. But for God and God's heart and God's concern and God's purpose for our lives is for us essentially to be happy, healthy, and whole, to be free, to be completely outside of a yoke of slavery, to be completely free of any type of slavery whatsoever. So I recommend that you look at God in a different way if you are going through a prolonged sickness do Bible studies, do um, have people come over and read the word of God and have them pray over you, have your pastors pray over you, do communion every single day if you have to in your home and wake up early and spend time with God and pour your heart, heart out to God and tell him how much you love him and how much you trust him. And things will turn around, my friend. I truly believe that. It's not me being completely um, innocent and, uh, and in a world of fantasy. No, God is not a, a world of fantasy. God is not this hocus pocus. No, God is real. God is real and God will take you out of that situation. He will give you the breakthrough. He will give you the respite that you need if you just believe in him and trust him that he is good and that he loves you and that he wants you to live a life of peace and of health and of happiness. God doesn't want us to be unhappy. God wants us to enjoy our lives. He wants us to be happy in this journey. He wants us to find the happiness and the joy that comes from knowing him, that comes from being in his presence and having a personal, intimate relationship with him. And so my friend, I encourage you today, look up and look all around you. Thank you, my father. Thank you for this word. My God, thank you. And we just love you, God, and we thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, thank you for being mindful of us and caring for us with such love and attention. It is amazing to think that the creator of the universe is concerned with every detail of our lives. 
Help us to trust in your care, God, bringing our worries and needs, my Father, bringing our diseases and our poverty and our lack of jobs or the loss of a family member or the divorce, my Father, or the problem with the children, my Father, the problem with whatever situation we are going through in life, we are surrendering it to you, my God. We are believing in you and trusting that you will heal us, my God heal us from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet my lord god i pray also for this country the united states of america i pray for the elections that are coming up i pray for israel i pray pray for the peace of israel my father and i pray for the elections my god of this country i pray that you will heal our land my father i pray my father that god and prayer will return to schools my father i pray oh god in the name of jesus christ of nazareth your precious son my father that you will surround the president my father and the future president my god with godly counsel my god with with wisdom my father i pray father god that you will choose the best president the best father god political affiliation god that it is the one, it is the platform that is going to honor you, my God. It is the platform that is going to honor the principles that this country was founded on, the principles, the Christian principles, my Father. My Father, in the name of Jesus, the Bible says that you are the one that enthrones kings and dethrones kings. And kings, my Father, in 2024 means also presidents and, of course, kings like in England. Um, but my God, I just pray, Lord God, that you would look down upon us with mercies and with compassions. I pray, oh God, that you will see, Father God, the condition of the hearts of these politicians, my Father. And I pray, oh God, that they will bring, my God, truth and justice and light into this country, God, that whatever they're promising in their political platforms, my Father, now because they want to be elected, I pray, oh God, in Jesus name that they will bring the truth that they will follow through on every promise I pray oh God in Jesus name father for the world to remain at peace my father for the world to remain father God free from wars and free father God from division and contention and father we pray oh God for the the poverty father god and the sickness of the world my father we pray oh god for all of the politicians my father and people in government to look at the needs of the people to not line their pockets any longer with money father god and that the greed and that the power of my father is annihilated my god in the hearts of men that are that are leaders of nations, God. I pray, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that there is a revival of God, a revival of Jesus Christ, my Father, throughout the whole world. I pray, O oh God, that you, God, that you are so concerned with your people that you are waiting until the last one is saved, God. And I just pray through your son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, oh God, that you will call many people, many people to, the, to come through the gates of salvation, God, before the end of this year. Men, women, and children, we pray, oh God, for their salvation, Father. We pray for angels, my Father, to be leading the way to be leading the procession of them going through the gates of salvation, God, into the kingdom of God, my Lord. I pray, O oh God, in Jesus' name, my Father, that those that are addicted, the prostitutes, my Father, the thieves, and my Father, the sinners, O oh God, that they will receive the revelation that you are Lord, that you are the only one that can transform their lives and heal their hearts in the name of your Son, Jesus. We pray, O oh God, we pray for the children. We pray, Father God, for the protection and your defense, my Father, towards the children of the world, my Father, towards the children that are being enslaved, Father God, through sexual slavery, God. We pray for those children, my Father. We pray that the gates of their prisons are open in Jesus' name, God. Thank you so much. We give you praise, honor, and glory. We love you. We thank you. We trust you, God. Thank you so much in Jesus' name. 
My friend, I encourage you to play in the light and play in the sunshine and dance in the rain. I pray that you will remain grateful, that you will remain in faith because those are the doors that open the keys or those are the keys that open the doors. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, we thank you. Lord God in heaven, thank you for the keys of faith, my Father, and gratitude. Father God, I pray blessings over the person that is listening to the sound of my voice. I don't know what country they are in right now, my Father, but I pray that you will protect them, that you will shield them, that you will defend them, that you will provide for them in Jesus' name. My friend, until we meet again, I pray blessings over you and your household, the blessings of the Lord. And I just thank you for coming on here every day and listening to these messages that God puts on my heart. May you be blessed until we meet again. This is a prayer to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Father God, thank you so much, my Lord, for Jesus. Thank you so much that I realize that I am a sinner and that I need a Savior, God. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the precious blood that was shed on the cross at Calvary for me, for my sins. Lord Jesus, I ask you forgiveness for every one of my sins. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. I give you my word that from this day forward, I will follow you. I will read the word, I will go to church, and I will spend time with you, Lord Jesus. I want to get to know you more. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for making something of my life that is worthwhile, something wonderful. Thank you, Lord, for accepting me as your son, as your daughter, into the kingdom of God. Thank you, Lord, for your love, for your great grace. In your name I pray, Lord Jesus. Thank you for receiving me today. Amen. My friend, if you have made this prayer, if you have said this prayer, I congratulate you for because today there is a celebration in heaven. The Bible says that when one sinner repents, there is a celebration. In other words, there is a party in the kingdom of God. And so I congratulate you because it is the absolute best decision that you will ever make or have ever made in your life. Many blessings to you and to your family. In Jesus' name, amen.